Okay, so uh, for this next part, we are going to uh, be using a new image, uh, which you can download as part of this lesson. Uh, so I have it open in GIMP already, and I have zoomed out so that we can see the entire thing a little better. And as usual, we're going to start with our uh, our typical steps, which, uh, if you uh, have forgotten, are select all, image, guides, new guides from selection and uh, and then we're gonna go over here to the layers menu and we're gonna right click on our layer and we're gonna go uh, all the way down to add alpha channel and uh, then we're gonna go create new transparent layer and uh, and then we're going to go select our bottom layer again, the photo. And now uh, for this, I picked this picture because it has three blank uh, rectangles filled with white. So, uh, and we're going to be using the rectangle select tool uh, to remove that white and make it transparent and, uh, and then replace it with uh, either a different color or a different image. So uh, now that we have got our guides in place and uh, we've done our preliminary steps, we're going to go ahead and, and we're going to zoom back in to 100% and that's going to make it much larger so we'll have to scroll around here a little. So um, make sure that you've got it positioned like this so you can see the entire first uh, picture frame here. And then uh, make sure you have your rectangle select tool uh, selected in your toolbox. And so what we're going to do is we're basically just going to click in the very corner of this white and we're going to make a rectangle that's as close to exactly the same size as the white inside it. And uh, once you let off your mouse you can adjust uh, the rectangle by hovering over uh, any of the lines and this box will appear and you just click that and you pull it in like that or you pull it back out. So get it as close as you can uh, that's, that looks pretty pretty close to me from this distance at least. Uh, and then uh, and then go ahead and hit your delete key and you'll notice it just kind of disappears. you know it's uh, like magic. <laughs> and so we'll go uh, select none and that looks pretty good. Looks like it got the uh, white. And uh, so yeah, you, that's the process that we would, we will be repeating here for all three of these. So again, just click in the corners as best as you can, uh, so that you don't leave any white left over. But you don't want to go over too far into the border and erase that. So it's uh, one of those things where being meticulous helps. Or pays off rather. Okay, and then delete. And uh, that's that's looking good. And another thing you could do is you can click in the middle of this rectangle and you can drag it over here to this one if you would like. And just uh, you know, drag it until it's placed in the right spot and let go and then delete. And that did a pretty good job of that. So now we'll go select none, and uh, we're going to zoom out a little, so view, zoom, zoom out. Okay, cool, so now we can see all three of them, and it uh, looks like we did pretty good with getting rid of those uh, white middles. Um, and so now we're going to take this, this top transparent layer and click the arrow down to put it behind this uh, photo. And so all what we can do is we can replace uh, what was in these pictures, picture frames with either an image or a color. Uh, and so uh, you just reselect uh, the area you want to um, fill. So first of all, we'll do this first one. We'll take the bucket tool again with our same uh, red. And we'll just click in it. And uh, you'll see that that turns it red. And then if you go select none, you can uh, check to see how the edges look. They look pretty good on that. Uh, and uh, so for this next one, go ahead and, and undo so that we have that selected again. And we'll click the rectangle select tool and then just click that to make it a rectangle again. And we'll just drag this over here to this next one, next frame here. 
and get it in the center. And then uh, before we do the blend, we'll click uh, create a new transparent layer and uh, put it down one behind our uh, photo. Make sure that our uh, blank transparent layer is selected. And to do the blend tool, we just click uh, and click towards the top of this rectangle. Click here and then just drag. There'll be a line that goes with you. And you just want to keep it as straight as possible. And uh, you can go as far as you'd like. Uh, I'm going to go about halfway and then let go of the mouse. And you'll see that it makes a nice uh, bright red to dark red gradient uh, instead of just a solid color. Let me go select none. And that's uh, looking pretty good. Uh, so, and then, yeah, you, you can do the same process with the third one. Uh, or you can you can add uh, a, uh, a f an image like... Uh, let's see. So the image I have for this example is this. Uh, just make sure it's the same orientation. So uh, we'll make a new layer for this, transparent layer. Click OK. And then uh, just drag your photo in. And obviously you can see it's way too big because it's taken up all three of these, right? So we're going to go view and, and zoom out. OK. And First, we're going to go over here to this layer that we just added, and we're going to right-click it. And uh, we're going to, like we usually do, add an alpha channel to it. And then next, we're going to go up here to the layer menu, and we're going to go scale layer. And we need to figure out, this can take a little uh, tweaking, but we're going to figure out what size we need to make this. Right now, it's 1170 pixels wide. And that's way too big, obviously. So <laughs> let's try uh, um, taking it down to uh, 470, 470 pixels, and scale. Okay, so now now we're in the realm of possibility, at least, right? Okay, so uh, first we're going to go over here and click our Move tool and make sure that Move the Active Layer is selected. And then we can, as you can see, we can move this around wherever we want. And uh, so, I mean, if we want to do a close-up kind of crop, we could do that if we want. Uh, or we can continue to play around with it. We can go back and go to Scale Layer again and try 370 instead and see what difference that makes. Okay, and now when we move it, we can see more of the image. Uh, and that looks, that's looking pretty good to me. I don't know about you, but... And so when it's, uh, again, when it's in the right place and you're happy with how it looks, then uh, what you uh, do is you right-click that layer and you just go uh, layer to image size so that it's not uh, differently sized anymore. And so there you have that. I'm going to close this so we can see. Uh, and uh, that looks pretty good to me. So that's how that's done.